project requirements for resources. The entire purpose of requirements is to provide a representation of the people class that are needed to complete the project. As an example, when a new project is scoped during that time, it is envisaged that, okay, there would be one project manager, there would be one project coordinator, a couple of consultants to deliver. Let's assume that if it's a Oracle ERP implementation project, then a couple of functional consultants, a couple of technical consultants, one integration architect, one database administrator, and so on. So what you are identifying here are the roles and the potential skills, experiences, and competency levels associated with those roles. But you still don't know who would fill that role in terms of the exact name of the person. And that's what you can do it in Oracle Project Resource Management. So you can simply log in into Oracle Projects and you can go and raise a new requirement for a specific resource, let's say an Oracle Applications TBA. So you simply create a new requirement. You say that, okay, this guy must be a level five and must have a competency levels of good English, good database administration skills, good apps administration skills, and so on. So in other words, a requirement is nothing but an unfilled work position on a project. It is an open team role without an assigned planning resource. Requirements also differ from assignments in the sense that they have additional attributes such as job levels. These additional attributes provide the details necessary to identify potential candidates to fill the role during the resource searches. So the example that we have taken just now, if you take that example, so additional attributes could be the skills of the apps DBA or his level of English or business communication and so on. If you use Oracle Project Resource Management, you can define competencies and advertisement rules for the new requirements. So what happens is once you define your requirements, you can optionally advertise that requirement within your organization or across all the organizations within your business group. So as we go along in the course, I'm going to show you how one can create a advertisement rule and provide the parameters for that advertisement rule and how one can associate a advertisement rule with a new requirement. So while you're defining the requirement, you can associate the resource or potential resource competencies and a unique advertisement rule. And once you publish that requirement, this advertisement rule will take it further to advertise that requirement within your organization. Requirement lifecycle. The requirement lifecycle begins with the creation of an open requirement on a project. The project requirement has three system schedule statuses. It can be filled, cancelled, or open. A project requirement status begins as open and can either fill through a resource search or directly by assigning a resource to fill the requirement. So say in the example we were discussing if we've got a requirement of or collapse DBA. So one way is to advertise that requirement internally do a resource search based on the skills that the project manager is looking for and then finding the potential resource and interviewing it, signing the resource loan agreement and bringing him on to the project. The second way in which a requirement can be filled is directly assigning the resource. For example, if I am the project manager and I know already there is one guy who is a highly experienced Oracle Applications DB and I like him in terms of his previous experience, his deliveries, his skills, and I know he would be competent enough to fill this role. So instead of advertising the requirement, I simply assign the name of that resource on this requirement. So that's how a requirement gets filled. And the last status is a cancel status. So assuming that if the requirement isn't filled at all or the situation changes, then you can always go and cancel a requirement. So let's go into Oracle applications and understand where and how 
one can create a new requirement, how one can define and associate competencies for a specific resource requirement, and how one can associate an advertisement rule for new requirements. So I'm going to minimize this and then we'll go into Oracle applications and here let's say I'm going to go and pick up a project say DM4 demo project and then I'm going to go to resources tab and here you can go to actions and then add requirements and hit the go button so that will allow you to add a new resource requirement here you can choose a predefined roles from the roles list that you have attached on to this project via the project template so it will show you all those roles so let's say a role of a business analyst however that is a standard role within the organization but as far as this project is concerned we have a role of a senior consultant so the project specific roles could be different than your standardized project organizational roles. So I can always change that to project specific team role. So let's say in this present project I'm going to call this as a senior consultant. Fine and then you can specify the dates for which you require this person. So presently by default it is right from the starting of the project to the ending of the project but you can always change that based on the exact requirement of this resource whether this resource has been hired for a specific task so in such a case you can specify the dates which are relative to that task completion date. Fine and then as you come down you will have something called as a staffing owner and the concept of staffing owner I explained to you a little while ago while explaining Oracle project resource requirement process flow. So we'll visit that a little later. He's the one who liaises with other resource manager to bring a resource on board on a project. Again staffing owners can be at different levels such as a organization level or just a project level or at a responsibility level. So if the staffing owner is only at the project level then he would be the one who would look after the hiring and firing of the resources and their maintenance as far as a specific project is concerned. However if it is at the organization level then he would look after the entire organization. Again the concept of staffing owner and the details about that I'm going to explain you a little while later so don't worry about it now. And then you have got the schedule status of requirement. So whether it's open or possible the two statuses and then on the right hand side you can see the country the state and city for which you're looking for this requirement then the minimum job level required for this resource and the maximum job level so you can always change that and this is coming from a list of values which I'm going to show you wherein you can define the job levels, competencies and other information. So let's say I want a minimum job level of 16 and a maximum of 40 for this particular role and then the advertisement rule and this is something I explained to you a little while ago wherein it helps you to advertise this particular resource requirement within or across your organizations. It all depends on how you have defined the advertisement rule. So a little while later I'm going to take you through the exact place wherein you define a new advertisement rule and then you have an option to immediately start the advertisement rule as soon as you save this requirement. And here you've got a project calendar so you must associate a calendar while you are raising a resource requirement. You can always change the calendar which gets defaulted from the project to some other calendar. So by default it's going to be project accounting or PA calendar the one that you define and associate as a part of your project organization setup. Fine. Now comes the competencies. So here you go and define the competencies. So by default 
these competencies got automatically defaulted from the role that you have chosen here okay and I've shown you in the previous movie how you go about defining those project roles so and how you can associate the competencies of those roles so what you can do at a requirement level is you can always update or add new competencies which are going to be project specific it won't write it back to the project role that you have attached but it will be only for the team role which is specific to this requirement and this project so if you want to add a new competency you can simply use this button to add rows and you can start adding again the name of a competency is coming from predefined list of values which you can always append and you can specify the proficiency levels over here and then whether this is a mandatory competency level or this is something optional something like good to have but you can still live with it if you don't find a resource having a specific competency level okay and let's leave it as it is and then go to financial information so few things like the job gets default from what uh, the role that you have just assigned but apart from that you can always change the other things such as the expenditure operating unit the expenditure organization the expenditure type they are self-explanatory and something I've explained you previously okay and then you've got something called as transfer price rate override so this is useful when you are going to hire a resource like intercompany resource and if you want to override the predefined transfer price let's say you as a project manager is based in New Zealand and there is going to be a project requirement in New Zealand and you are unable to find a resource in New Zealand and you want to hire a resource from your other subsidiaries across the world and when you hire a resource from your other subsidiaries then there would be an internal charge and that charge would be like 150 percent of the base charge so if the base charge or the base rate of the resource is going to be hundred dollar per hour then the transfer price is going to be 150 dollar so the reason of telling you is that you can always change that particular rate so you can change that to let's say by default the transfer pricing rate is 150 percent then you can change that to say 200 percent you can specify that you can override the currency the basis and so on you can also specify the details of the resource loan agreement over here such as the extension possible or not or expense owner whether it's going to be client or project organization or resource organization and so on again details about the resource loan agreement and how one can leverage it I'm going to explain you a little while later wherein I'm going to take you through the entire process of hiring a external resource all right so at this stage you're going to simply apply and return to scheduled people so it's going to save that requirement so you can hit none over here to escape that error it's going to save and return it back to the previous screen which is for scheduled people all right so that's how you go about defining a new requirement